Hey folks, it's Mr. Fly here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another bike review. Today I'm on the Sinis Terrain T380 and uh, this is basically a new bike came out in 2020 and it's a proper full-size adventure bike. Stick around, stay tuned, I'll tell you what I think of it. So a while back I rode the uh, Terrain 380's smaller brother, the uh, 125 version of the bike. I was quite impressed with it. These bikes from Sinis are uh, imported by Sinis down in Brighton, but they're made from components that come from China. So let's just get that out of the way first off. People for some reason always slag off Chinese bikes. I'm open-minded about them. I've ridden plenty of Chinese bikes from different manufacturers. And in the main, I found them pretty good. But they are built to a price and you do buy them at cheap prices. So this bike, one of the great things about this, four and a half thousand pounds. And for that you get a full-sized adventure bike with a seven inch full color LCD display. And for an extra, I think about 300 quid, you can get the full aluminium panniers as well. So you've got the full Charlie and Ewan experience for less than five grand. So that's the good news. In fact, there's quite a bit of good news about the Sinners. I've only been riding it for a little while, but you can quickly form an opinion on a bike. Let me take you through what I've found so far. Not everything is good, by the way, so <laughs> I'll cover that, particularly when we do the walk around in a minute. Okay, so first up, seating position. What's it like comfort-wise? Well, very comfortable is the answer. I'm sat pretty much bolt upright. My legs feel slightly tucked up, slightly acute uh, leg position. It feels good, seat's nice and comfy. Handlebars a little bit narrower than other adventure bikes that I've ridden, but they feel absolutely fine. It's all good from a comfort point of view. Hello, sir. Clutch is nice and light. Gearbox, beautiful. Rides really nicely, actually. Down this little uh, stretch of road, it's all too short, but it's... Uh, one of my favourite little stretches for handling. And it does actually feel quite light and flickable actually when you're on the move. The bike itself, wet, is 200 kilograms, which makes it pretty light for a bike in this class. Although I have to say, when you're moving it around the driveway, it feels fairly heavy to me. So uh, I haven't actually weighed it myself, but it feels heavier than the 200 kilograms claimed, I must say. But when you're moving, as I say, it feels nice and light actually, no problem here. Let's just try the front brake. Front brake, I would say, is adequate. It's not brilliant, but then again, it's a four and a half thousand pound motorcycle. Back brake, not much there, to be fair. Bike does, of course, have ABS, but no traction control. As you'd expect of a bike of this sort of price, it's not laden with uh, facilities but one surprising thing is this big display here so an LCD as opposed to a TFT I mean a TFT is just a type of LCD but it's full color and it's large uh, you know it's better than you'd expect on a bike again costing this much money so like that it's got everything you need including a proper fuel gauge the gearbox is very nice actually the gears change very easily I've not had any false neutrals in the time I've been riding it and finding neutral is nice and easy Proper six-speed box as well. The clutch is nice and light. It handles really nicely, actually. Mirrors on the bike. Uh, jury's out on those. I've got them adjusted so I can see behind me now are okay, and they're not vibrating, so they're good in that respect. But I have to say, I found actually adjusting them a bit tricky. I'm not sure I like the shape of them either. They're a weird sort of shape. But this ball joint here isn't quite as flexible as you'd like it, so I couldn't quite get the mirrors in the position that would be ideal. So they're not quite as adjusted as I'd like. But they, you know, they don't shake and rattle and roll or anything, so they're all right in that respect. You know, I have to say, it's, you can chuck this around all right. It's physically quite a big bike, so the wind protection is quite good off of this big screen. The screen, as far as I can tell, is not adjustable. I've had a look at it and it doesn't appear to be adjustable. But at my five foot eight, I'm, you know, protected nicely in here. I haven't got any terrible vibrations, at least at this speed, you know, of turbulent air off my helmet, so that's all right. 
switch gear, nice and simple as you'd expect. Proper buttons here, nice and tactile, you know when you've pressed them. They look a little bit cheap, but they're not, you know, they're not significantly worse than uh, other manufacturers' uh, bikes in this sort of category. So I race, recently rode the KTM Adventure 390, which is, a, I guess, a competitor of this bike. And the switch gear on that was comparable. Well, the overwhelming sense that I get from riding this is, how do they do it for the money? The bike looks quite nice. Again, I'll show you in a minute when we do the walk around what it looks like. It's got a bit of Triumph Tiger about it. And if you just plonk me on here riding this, I would never guess that you're on a four and a half thousand pounds motorcycle. It feels absolutely fine. However, as I hinted at the start of the review, all is not maybe well with the bike. <laughs> Let me uh, park up at the station up here in Wendover. We'll do the walk around, I'll talk you through the spec and I'll show you the bike and there you'll see maybe where some of the shortcomings are and where the, uh, where the cheap price is reflected. Okay, so here she is, the uh, Sinus T380 Terrain, uh, their big adventure bike, the most powerful of the Sinus bikes, I believe. Uh, you can see uh, what I mean about it having a bit of uh, Triumph Tiger about it, maybe? Anyway, let's uh, talk you through the spec in the usual way. Let me get the uh, phone out with the other camera, and uh, I'll take you through the details. So here we go. Alrighty then, so uh, let's talk about the spec on this bike. Uh, the engine, uh, and you'll immediately notice something about this as I bring the phone down, and uh, you'll notice those uh, those up pipes, those headers look are absolutely crowed to hell. But more about that in a minute. Anyway, the engine on here, three seven eight cc uh, twin cylinder water cooled engine. It's uh, based actually on a Suzuki unit, so it should probably be pretty reliable, I imagine. Puts out a thirty six and a half brake horsepower at nine thousand rpm, so it is A two license compliant. So, uh, you know, this is possible as a first sort of big bike. Torque-wise, 35 newton metres, or 26 pounds-feet at 6,500 RPM. Uh, brakes on this, uh, as I say, they felt a sort of adequate, which is surprising. It's actually got four pot calipers look, on these petal discs, which look quite nice. Uh, but the brakes didn't feel that great when I was using them, but they ha has got four pot calipers and a 19-inch front wheel. At the back, it's got a 17-inch front wheel and a dual pot uh, caliper, as you can see. And oh yeah, I just noticed it's got sort of a GS-like um, mudguard at the back as well. Uh, suspension on here. The front suspension looks pretty beefy actually, upside down forks on here. I don't actually know what size these are, but they do look pretty uh, pretty beefy. Uh, and they are adjustable for damping. So let's have a look at the tops here, if I can just get the camera in. You can see you can just uh, get the screwdriver in there and adjust the damping on them. Uh, the rear, pretty basic, non-adjustable I think, except perhaps for preload. I can't even see in there unfortunately to have a look. Oh, there's the exhaust tucked in there, which looks pretty hideous. But the bike sounds quite good. And there's those panniers I mentioned, which uh, actually are excellent. They're quite cheap as well. I'll get to the price of the bike in a minute, but the panniers are very good. In fact, while I mention it, let me just show you those, because I'll probably forget. So the top box here, got my gloves in there at the moment, attaches via a very easy uh, attachment mechanism. You just basically unscrew and screw that. So that's pretty good. And the side panniers, same thing as well. Uh, in terms of attachment, very, very easy. Top loading, which I like. Uh, and again, they just uh, attach via these plastic uh, screws that screw on they just kind of nip up at the back very easy to take on and off so that's actually a good touch and actually price wise the bike itself uh, as I mentioned is 4495 uh, but if you want those panniers you have to add another 255 quid which is an absolute bargain normally on adventure bikes you're looking like a thousand quid time you've put the uh, racks and everything else on so that is uh, that is good in terms of the looks of the bike I think she looks pretty good uh, definitely, as I say, a bit of Triumph Tiger about it, but yeah, handsome looking beast. Uh, what else to tell you on the spec uh, before we get to a bit more about the fit and finish on the bike? Uh, tank capacity 18 litres, uh, expecting it to be frugal, since claim uh, 300 miles per tank, about 70 miles per gallon, no reason to disbelieve that. Uh, wet weight, as I said, 200 kilograms, although it does feel a bit heavy when you're lugging it around. Seat height on here is 820 mil, uh, and you can get you, you can get it lowered to 790 mil. So, you know, it's sort of a medium height bike, I suppose. Up me at five foot eight with a 32 inch leg, I'm on the balls of my feet. It doesn't feel too tall, but it's certainly not a short, you know, a small bike in that respect. Electronics wise, it's got uh, LED headlight. Uh, there we go. And uh, LED indicators as well, by the looks of it. It's got that uh, full colour 
LCD screen as I mentioned, uh, ABS, a couple of power sockets actually on the front as well, if I come around here and show you, we've got a sort of cigarette lighter type power socket there, and this side we've got USB, so uh, you can plug your accessories in as well, so that's uh, again, a bike for this price, pretty good going. Uh, and that I think is pretty much it for the spec, um, oh tyres on here, these are Again, these are sort of, uh, oh, I'm not entirely sure, they're made by Tim Sum, there we go. Uh, they look sort of off-roady, I'm not sure how much I'd trust them in the wet. I think if I got one of these bikes I'd probably replace the tyres for something from a better known brand. Alright, okay, so I was alluding to the fact that not maybe all is well with this particular bike, and I'll explain why, and it's to do with the fit and finish on this. This bike's done 800 miles, right? It's a 2020 bike, I'm recording this in April, so it's definitely no newer than a year old, or, or certainly it's a year old at its oldest, and just look at the condition of it. Those downpipes I've already mentioned are absolutely corroded to bits. It's obviously been dropped once or twice this bike, it's been off-road and dropped because the crash bars are absolutely mullered on it, which is fair enough, that's the sort of bike it is. If we look at the engine casing, we can see that there, there's some wear on the paint from people's boots or whatever uh, already, so that's not particularly hard wearing. The exhaust looks like it's seen better days. Uh, if we looked at the uh, where your legs go on the front here, look, that's already worn out just from uh, legs being there. Uh, again, the it's obviously been dropped, look there's some dents and dints on it here. And this is the press bike that Sinis sent out. Now normally when a press, you know, when a manufacturer sends you a bike, they send you one that looks brand new and in pristine condition to create the best possible impression. Well I think Sinis needs to maybe learn that lesson, so I don't mean to be hypercritical, but uh, sending out a bike that basically is a shed uh, for somebody to review is never going to end well, is it? So uh, anyway, my point is, this one may have been abused, and if you bought one you probably wouldn't abuse it yourself. But it does make you wonder what the longevity of this bike is when you see things like that on a bike that's only done 800 miles. Anyway, there we go, that's enough about that. Let's uh, jump back on her and ride her some more. So despite the poor, uh, you know, fit and finish on it, if you like, well, the fit is fine, it's just the finish doesn't look like it's holding up very well. Uh, it is a surprisingly nice bike to ride, actually. So it's sort of a, a bike of two halves. On the one hand, I'm disappointed with it because it looks such a shed. On the other hand, I'm quite impressed by the way it rides, so interesting. Anyway, while we're here in the um, station car park, I do quite like the way this screen looks, really good. Let's uh, just see what she's like from a turning circle point of view. There's a car coming in there, but... Uh, right, so I'll ride down the middle of this parking spot. Nice like clutch on her. And almost within two spaces. Very tight turning circle actually, so that's a plus point. A little bit of vibration through the seat that I don't think I mentioned before. Nothing to be worried about. I mean, on a motorcycle at the end of the day. So that's absolutely fine. Well, actually, let's just try standing up. Feels very balanced. Stood up. Quite a nice natural riding position. No problem there. Let's go back this way. So let's hit some uh, slightly faster roads and see what she's like. Thank you, sir. At faster speeds. It does feel like I'm changing gear quite often, so the gearing is quite short on here. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It means you access the torque nice and low down. But I don't know whether it's going to feel like it uh, runs out of puff once you get to higher speeds. That's why I want to get on a slightly faster road up here. So just while I'm uh, waiting to get onto a quicker road, let's just ponder what the alternatives to this bike would be. So I suppose the obvious competitor would be something like the Royal Enfield Himalayan, which is pretty much the same price actually, and a similar type of bike in terms of its size and its purpose. Similarly specced, I suppose, as well, in terms of facilities. Okay, it doesn't have the big colour screen, but it's got like the little nav thing. So, you know, some you win, some you lose in terms of facilities on the bike. So they're very comparable machines. Which would I have for the money? Well, there's no doubt this ride's nicer than the Himalayan. It feels a nicer bike to ride. It feels more eager. 
feels better balanced in the turns. But I can't help but think that the uh, Enfield is going to be better in terms of its longevity. You know those Enfields are built like battleships. <laughs> For exactly the purpose for which they were built. So you know, I think the Royal Enfield will possibly last better than this based on uh, how this one has fared in its short life so far. The other obvious competitor I guess is the KTM 390 Adventure which I know quite well, I mentioned that already. That's about a £1,000 more. So you're gonna have to dig deep into your pocket for that one because that's you know at a bike at this price that's you know 20% more isn't it? I mean I think there's no doubt if you could stretch the thousand pounds, go for the KTM, it just feels a much better quality bike. I'm convinced it would uh, stand the test of time better, and it's uh, equally as fun to ride, if not more so. I think the KTM is worth a thousand pounds more. If you can stretch, go for that. Otherwise it's between this and the Himalayan, and I'm not sure which one I go for because this is a nicer bike to ride than the Himalayan. Actually there we go, I just went, I was in fifth gear and I just went to change up again, that shows how short the gearing is. I'm just wondering whether I've got the space and gusto to overtake this car in front. I'm doing 52 miles an hour. It's quite a stream of traffic coming the other way so I don't think I'm going to, but at 50 miles an hour, I'm doing 5,000 RPM. Feels like it's got a bit more to give. Not a whole lot more. I think it's quoted top speed is something like 86 miles an hour, that sounds like it's about right, possibly even a little optimistic. Certainly a comfy bike, if you're not very heavy you could take a peeling on here fine, particularly that top box that's got that uh, backrest as well, you make a fine commuter and I'm sure maybe with some different tyres you could do a bit of uh, basic green landing on it as well. So certainly a good all-rounder you cannot argue with the value for money at that price so there we are that's my uh, first impressions review of the brand new for 2020 Sinis T380 terrain so I guess my ultimate summary is jury's out on the uh, how well the bike would last it rides nice and it looks good and it's amazing value for money so take your choice based on that all right hope you found that of some interest Look forward to speak to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. Fly Cheerio.